Hi everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be sharing with you guys episode 6 of the Gladiator series, where we basically equip a guy with the bare essentials, and we only loot the players we kill. So, nothing from the ground, etc. It can only be from players we kill. So the loot in my inventory and the stuff I'm staring at right now is actually from players I've killed. And we were fortunate enough last episode to probably get our biggest haul ever, which came courtesy of a very, very well-geared rogue. So lots of blues and lots of purples, and with the fighter class, I can use most of those weapons, or actually all those weapons, with uh, weapon mastery. So I never really expected to be able to get blue or purple gear from this challenge. It was kind of just to see how long I could survive or what my kill totals could become. Now, I did end up taking the windlass here, and I'll just be upfront and honest with you guys, as I usually try to be. I am a little bit embarrassed to be showing you some of this gameplay. <laughs> so, just keep that in mind. Some of this is exhaustion. Some of this is just uh, me never actually using the windlass crossbow in this playtest at all. Uh, so, we deal with the little bat, who, um, actually the first time I saw one of those bats, I was almost terrified, thinking it was going to do way more damage to me than it did. And, quite frankly, they don't really do much to you if, uh, if you kind of sidestep. So right off the hop, we get a guy below us, which is like, you know, a dream come true. We have this bow we want to try. And, uh, yeah, our first shot doesn't land. We we're hoping he would kind of walk into it. I think my problem is, and, uh, we'll see more of it. I'm attempting to use it as if it's a normal crossbow, and I'm not sure if the projectile speed is the same. Because the normal crossbow has terrible projectile speed. We get another guy here. And I... I don't think that actually hit him. I think that went over his head, so... Which makes me think the projectile speed's a lot different. And I just wasn't aware. And we miss another one. Yeah. This stuff happens, uh... It's just not, uh, your typical video most YouTubers are gonna show you. <laughs> so, yeah. We're gonna actually push this. We have a falchion, which isn't a terrible weapon. And pots, and, you know, a bit of light gear. So, it's probably one of my more geared runs I've had in a long time. So, I kind of want to be a little more aggressive. See if I can, uh, take some, uh, you know cheap little bandages off these guys. They're still chasing each other around with their swords in their pockets, and I get randomly smashed by an arrow. Oh, it really confuses me. Of all the players that can aggro onto it, just immediately turned onto me. So we have to use a pot here, which is kind of unfortunate, because we're still going to be, you know, 70, 75 HP. Even after we, uh, finish off that potion. We end up taking a blue potion here, hoping this guy is, uh, now ready to fight us, which he seems to be. He's got second wind pop. We land a hit. I'm not sure if that second hit landed. And, uh, he just tore right through us. You know, that rapier doing 20-25 damage was enough to seal the deal, apparently. I'm always confused with the falchion. And if I'm actually hitting heads or hitting arms. Because I think he actually may have blocked the second hit with his arm. That being said, we still landed three hits. So, you know, I was kind of looking at the damage. I was expecting him to be a little low. That being said, second wind likely kept him alive. But I feel like if those hits had actually registered as headshots, he should have been dead. Should have been two headshots and that should have been it. Uh, so, unlucky. And, uh, I'll never use the windless crossbow again. We've decided. That's not something I should be trying in this series. Yeah, testing out weapons for the first time is fun. But usually not, uh, profitable, if you know what I mean. So we gear up lightly, and we're going back in. This time, you'll see we're actually using something even more extraordinary. The most well-known and most liked dagger of all the rogues, the Chris Dagger. Honestly, at this point, I'm just still sad with my last performance. So I, I do really don't want to lose, uh... <laughs> I really don't want to lose more good stuff. We deal with the mummy, and we deal with the second mummy. I think I've truthfully shown you guys this uh, spawn probably six times of the 10 or 11 games I've played. 
So I'm not really sure what's the what's the deal, but I get this spawn a lot. We're gonna deal with this death beetle the best way we know how, which is take damage and uh, smash my little dagger into the wall. Excellent, excellent gameplay, and uh, yeah, now we have to decide. We did grab a bandage, which was obviously useful. We're gonna pop that bandage, have a quick rest, and be on our way. While resting, we actually hear some stuff breaking around us. So it could be a guy above us. It looks like, looks like we may have trouble here real, real close. Yeah, he, he's taking some damage, hopefully. Yep, I would say, uh, yeah, he's definitely taking damage. He got really smashed by that mage, which, truthfully, they can be a little surprising sometimes with their hitboxes. And I'm absolutely terrified right here. Because if you get tagged by one of them, you're pretty much toast in terms of recovering your HP. I find, uh, they sometimes throw curveballs that just connect. So I'm basically finding the Chris Dagger just the worst Castellan Dagger. You get that sweeping attack, which is similar. Although I feel like the Castellan is just... Makes more sense. Like, you can get a couple sweeping attacks off and back yourself up. You don't have to lunge in on that second swing to try to connect with the stab. And the st that stab, that second stab comes out really quickly. It's just, uh, it puts you a little too close to the, the goblins to actually be useful. And seeing... You know, we're getting a little later in this series. I do want to get to level 15. These are kind of the games where I start to rush a little. Because I'm just trying to get through some levels. And, uh... Yeah. Speaking of rush, this guy looks like he's going to rush me. And we may be using our Adrenaline Rush uh, Chris Dagger combo. He gives us some space. So we get it back up to 75 HP. Quick potion, quick rest. But the goblin basically is just stuck in our face. Fortunately, he was one one hit away. I'm still hearing steps and I'm hearing mobs. Uh, someone would have had to aggro that uh, skeleton, so someone's definitely been through there. And this guy is actually waiting for us, so we're definitely fighting here. We basically, uh, barrel stuff him. That's the best way to describe that. He, he like, we're nose to nose, and I was just kind of slicing his, uh, slicing his face. Uh, it worked. Uh, I'm not gonna say it was perfectly well done, but we... We end up snagging a lot of good gear from this guy. Only issue is... Don't have a whole lot of meds. A couple bandages just isn't gonna cut it. I'm really surprised to see a barbarian with a couple of rings. Fairly nice rings, actually, with strength on them. And a double axe. Don't see a double axe all that often. Kind of an interesting one. Not sure I'm going to be using that on the fighter class. Right here, I should have tossed uh, my starting sword and shield away. And grabbed one of those axes. Just to maximize my loot. We get a rogue chilling here in the corner, which isn't something we want to deal with at 25 HP. If he was a more confident rogue, he could literally just throw a couple knives at us, and we'd be we'd be cooked. We're gonna have to rest here. Get some of our HP back. Sounds like those steps are a lot closer than they are, and knowing that that door is open, I kind of end that one early. As I expected a guy to be right in that hallway. Once again, there's no one there, so we could have actually healed up a lot more of that HP. Goblin Caves can do that to you if you start to get a little bit sketched out or paranoid. You'll hear footsteps literally everywhere, because, uh, this time, we're convinced there's a guy here close by, and there is. He just takes off. So good thing we didn't, uh, get caught basically sleeping in the corner. He seriously just zooms out of there, so... Ha! <laughs> kind of surprising. And now it looks like he's taking, taking a blast from Skeleton Mage. You look in the top corner, he's actually 
Skeleton Mage is actually taking somebody out, so I'm assuming that rogue is now dead. And I seriously hope he's out there watching this, and he can look at this video and go, Wow, that guy only had 15 HP. I wish I had it just turned and fought him. <laughs> so. He kind of wasted his opportunity, and then got smashed by a fireball. We're gonna try to sneak through some of these rooms. There's definitely guys above us, and I'm already seriously concerned that I'm not gonna get a portal. If you look at some of these rooms, it's really difficult to get up top. And the zone has now kind of blocked us into a position where we don't really have a whole lot of health to be scouting around outside of zone and repositioning. Especially when we're using a dagger that just does not kill stuff quickly. We hear a portal up top get opened and used. So I'm assuming there's still another guy up there. Get the two-handed uh, Zwayhander here. Skelly, and we're just going to try to zoom past this. We can try to get to the other side. Somewhere we can maybe get to a position where we can find a portal easier. It's really not looking good. Zone right at the edge of our toes. We are in a very bad situation, which happens far too often in Goblin Caves. If you're on the lower levels. They're being, being pushed into... And actually, uh, Skeleton Champion's right there as well. Being pushed into a, an area where there's a ton of mobs. Don't really have time to clear them. And, uh... There's still not even a portal down here, so... I have basically nothing, nothing to fight for here. We get tagged by a sword swing, we dodge a fireball, and uh, this isn't looking good. We hide in this room for a bit, just maybe we'll get lucky. Even if a portal spawns out there, the chances of me being able to open it in time. Take one last look at my inventory because I have a feeling this could be it. This could be the end. It's a lot of good stuff. One personal escape portal has appeared. I didn't hear a portal anywhere close, so... That may be the last one, and it's probably somewhere up top. Sad. And then we get another mob pushing us, of course. And we basically, we have to leave. Get another portal. And we can hear it. Just have no clue. No clue where it spawned. It sounded like it was somewhere close to us. So I have a feeling it's uh, probably above us. So I kind of accept what's uh, inevitable here. And just kind of go searching just to see if there was any chance at all. And I could have, if I had a thought, right there. Could have broke those boards. And went upstairs earlier. With all the mobs and stuff in the way, I kind of get a little distracted. That may have been our only chance to actually survive that round. So we're level 7, we've died 6 times, we've got 13 kills, and basically our kills and deaths totals hasn't been increasing the way I'd like. Our gladiators taken a, a beating basically, every round with crappy gear. Though entertaining, our owners are starting to get a little concerned. So, we make the decision next episode that maybe it's best if we seek a little help from the Goblin Merchant to get us some gear that will kind of send us on our way. So let's cross our fingers and hope for some good luck. And I uh, just want to thank all you guys that are watching these videos. It's been uh, hugely helpful. I've been super busy. But I'll keep uh, rolling out the copium slash hopium for as long as I can. So cheers. Continue holding the line. There is hope. And I'll see you guys next time.